Tens of thousands of protesters stormed the government buildings after months of economic crisis, the country's worst in more than 70 years. Sri Lanka's president, Gotabaya Rajapaksa, and Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe both say they will now resign, making the way for a new government which will be tasked with restoring the economy. So why has public anger risen so sharply? What is behind this economic crisis? And what happens next? Well, Sky News correspondent Nicole Johnston has more. This may be the only food these children have today. Everyone is here for a free meal from charity. With poverty soaring, one in five Sri Lankans are going hungry. And families stuck living in utter misery have no way out of it. Indica is trying to provide for two disabled children and a grandmother with diabetes. Before the crisis, Indika worked as a labourer, she told me. Now there's no work or money for either food or medicine. And for her dinner, only a cup of tea. With no money for a bus, the only way to get home is on foot, a three-mile walk. Even the volunteers have gone without food for the last few days. The UN estimates 70% of people are missing a meal every day. The last three months, none of the politicians in the full queues, none of the officers in the full queues. So how come they are there, not there, and we are in the queue? Some of my friends are there for four days. Who do you blame for this? The Sri Lankan government, the president, is definitely, uh, you know, responsible for the crisis that we are in. Drivers agree with that. Six weeks ago, they spent a few hours a day in petrol queues. Now they wait for days. Without fuel, they can't work. Without work, they can't eat. My life is very bad. Very bad. No money. Uh, my, I have uh, two children. Are the children hungry? Sometimes... One time eat, sometime two time eat. Like this, my life. The Rajapaksa government has racked up more than 40 billion pounds in debt. These people blame the Rajapaksas for all their problems, and there's now a push to hold them to account. The Supreme Court is set to decide whether it will ban senior members of government, including the former Prime Minister Rajapaksa, from leaving the country. For years, Sri Lanka has lived beyond its means. Now it's falling apart. In this city of never-ending queues, people are waiting for rescue. Nicole Johnston, Sky News, Colombo. With us now is Sri Lankan political columnist Asanga Abayu Gunasekara. He's a senior fellow with the Millennium Project in Washington, D.C., and he's also the author of Conundrum of an Island, Sri Lanka's Geopolitical Challenges. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. I would like to ask, first of all, for your perspective on the food and fuel shortages that we just saw there uh, in our colleague's piece. What is the situation like on the ground for working people in Sri Lanka at the moment? Well, the, the people have to stand for more than four days uh, to uh, get fuel. They are given a token when they go to the fuel shed, uh, fuel station. So it's a, it's a very uh, sad, I would say, a challenging time for the Sri Lankan people. Uh, they are having one meal a day. Uh, United Nations said 22% um, are hungry in Sri Lanka. Actually, it's more than that. Uh, people are hungry. Um, they have community kitchens. Uh, so uh, it's a, it's a time of the I mean the what happened on the ninth was a Arab Spring moment. I can compare it uh, to an Arab Spring because the three attributes of the Arab Spring, which is against the autocratic rule, corruption, and the economic conditions, match Sri Lankan situation. And the protests have obviously been going on for months, but it seems now that they have truly reached a boiling point. How has the government been responding to uh, this this uprising? Well, the president has no other option than to resign, so he's due to resign tomorrow. Um, well, they have occupied the presidential uh, house as well as um, his um, office. 
and also Prime Minister's residence. They want the President to step down as well as the Prime Minister. Uh, well, the President is because of the, you know, the autocratic rule uh, of the country, as well as the mismanagement, the economic mismanagement, especially from his inward ultra-nationalist policies. Um, and most of the policies, uh, I mean, cripple the economy. So this this was the sad uh, time for all of the Sri Lankan people, but also a victory for the general uh, public. And uh, I think tomorrow they will be celebrating the resignation. But they want the resignation of the prime minister also. And I wonder, uh, you know, I, I, you mentioned mismanagement. And here in the United States, there's enormous emphasis put on the idea that we should move toward a diet uh, of mostly organically grown agriculture. As I understand it, the president, Rajapaksa, put into place basically an overnight prohibition in your country on uh, anything but organic agriculture. He did away with chemical fertilizers and pesticides, and that seems to have led to an enormous agricultural crisis. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, it was a one-night shift, uh, and it affected the entire agriculture industry. It's not only that. Mm -hmm. I call it, he uh, politicized most of his uh, decisions, uh, saying, uh, using his ultra-nationalist uh, position, that that was a irrational. Uh, most of the decisions were irrational, such as the assistance, the foreign assistance he rejected uh, from the United States, the Millennium Challenge uh, Corporation Fund, just 480 million. His own committee rejected, saying it's a national security threat for Sri Lanka. This is incorrect. And also Japan, Japanese assistance uh, and Indian assistance. So, I mean, what you see is a lot of irrational decisions. And a week ago, he made a very rational addition, he and his prime minister, appointing a casino boss to the uh, cabinet. So those are irrational decisions. And and you can see uh, yeah. you know, some of the, another decision I can share with you, uh, which is uh, he said well, for the people to take one day off from the working, uh, working week and to grow vegetables. People are hungry. They don't have uh, the basic food. Now the medicine is running out. So it's a humanitarian crisis uh, in the horizon. And I have to ask you this because the images seem so parallel. We have so many images here in the United States of the January 6th attack on our capital. Here we're seeing photographs of people streaming into the capital in Sri Lanka. Are there parallels to be drawn between these protests? Or when you look at these two things, are they very different? No, they're different. Uh, January 6th was different. I think this is completely different because this is against an autocratic rule. Is against a person who abused the minority community, the human rights violations, uh, which was uh, highlighted in Geneva. So multiple factors of uh, corruption. Uh, and now he, they're trying to fly away to other countries. But uh, the democratic nations uh, should not uh, entertain this. And because of the, uh, they have looted the money of the people. So the people are asking, we want accountability uh, for the corruption charges. So they, they want... Uh, their money back. And that's um, what you see is it, and, uh, the interpretation that it's a mob. It's not a mob. They're children, they're mothers. They have walked in because they, he's not resigning. This is the 92nd day uh, of the protest. Mm. So the, this was the only thing that uh, they could do to move into the buildings. Asanga Abayaguna Sekura, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Now, before you go, we have something.